with the lack of structure nowadays and a lot more time on my hands, this has allowed me the opportunity to try a couple of new things, and that led me down the path into starting a bullet journal. Just a heads up, I am in no way venturing into becoming a hardcore bullet journaler, journalist. The purpose of my journaling is functionality and practicality. While decoration and stylization is not a priority, it's more meant to be icing on the cake. This lovely pouch is what holds all the stuff that I use for bujoing. It's made by a company called Delde, and they are well known for making this standing style of pen case. Case in point, pun fully intended, you pull down on the side tabs here to access your pens, which as you can see here are all standing up. In this video, I'll be focusing on the writing utensils that I use for my journaling. The first half being on the basic tools that make up the framework and body of my writing content. The second half will look into pens that I use for stylizing purposes. As in, they are not necessary, but they sure do make everything look shinier and prettier. As I go through the pens, I will share with you what purpose each pen serves for me, along with some personal impressions or thoughts in how it has impacted my journal. I will also share with you the name of the pen and how much I got it for in Japanese yen. Keep in mind that because I live in Japan, all of the pens that you see in this video have been purchased in Japan. I cannot be sure if your local stationery shop will carry these pens, but based on what I've seen on the interwebs, these pens seem pretty standard in the journaling community, which makes me believe that it should not be too hard to get them. Before we get into pens, let me share with you my chosen Bujo book, the Rodia Dotted A5 Web Notebook. It comes with an elastic band, a single ribbon bookmark, and an inner back pocket. I was debating between this and a Leuchtturm and a Moleskin. Since I plan to use a lot of pigmented colors in my pages, the deciding factor was the ghosting capacity, that is, how much of the ink from the pen can be seen through the other side of the page. You can see that I swatched all my pens on this page, and there is very little ghosting. Here is my future log spread, which has a lot of black ink and grays, and again, very little ghosting. Among the three, the Rodea seemed to have the least ghosting. And that is that for my chosen one. I'll be using another Rodea notebook to work my pens on. This time, it's a dotted notepad. What I really like about this notepad is that all the pages are terrible. Not that terrible. The other one. As in, you can very easily remove a single page from the pad. And this is what I'll be scratching my pens on in this video. And with that, let's get into the pens. Let's start off with pens that I use to write with. First up is this Muji Erasable Pen in 0.4 millimeters. It also comes in 0.5. This is my favorite erasable pen. I'm pretty sure that's an unpopular opinion. Unfortunately, the Muji Erasable pens come in a very limited color range of black, blue, red, and pink. It has a very simple body and design which is really the basis for the style of the Muji brand. Next up is the ever-popular Friction Pen in 0.4. I got this because the Muji Blue I found was a little too light for my liking. I love 0.4, it's not as thick as 0.5, and since my handwriting is on the small side, fine tips tend to better suit my writing style. It's definitely more stylish than Muji, it has a stronger body casing, and it comes in a greater variety of colors. Although I have found time and time again that it often requires more force and strokes to erase the ink compared to the Muji pen. In short, I find the Muji erasable pen to be a little bit easier to write with than the friction pen. And now let's move on to fine liners, and there's really only one. It's a Sakura Micron Pigma. This one is 0.3 millimeters, and I at first got confused thinking that the O2 was a tip size, but that's not what it is. This is a staple fine liner for anyone who is into journaling and doing line art. It's so deeply loved because it doesn't bleed, doesn't run, and the tip doesn't fray. It has a consistent black, and it practically lasts forever. And now we're heading into brush pens. Here's where things get a little confusing. Because there's also something called sign pens, which look very similar to brush pens. 
In Japan, you can get both, and sometimes pens can are designated as sign pens as opposed to brush pens. Sign pens are slightly different than brush pens because sign pens are aimed towards signatures, hence sign pens. In Japanese, sign means signature. And then there are the fude pens, or what everyone knows as the brush pens. Brush pens differ in that they are aimed for more stylized writing, that is, calligraphy. Brush pens are therefore more geared towards art, while sign pens are more geared towards writing. And it certainly doesn't help that there are several pens that contain both the words sign and fude, so maybe that means they have a dual function? In my experience, sign pens and brush pens essentially work in the same way. Anyway, this is how I have designated the roles between my fude and sign pens. For titles and cover pages, I use the Zebra Fude Sign Pen in medium. For headings, I use the same Zebra Fude Sign Pen, but with the fine tip. This tip is more flexible than the medium tipped one. I prefer pens with softer tips because I have a light hand and I find them easier to control. An easy way to distinguish between the two brush pens is by color. The medium tip pen is a dark gray color and the fine tip pen is a lighter gray. For subheadings, I use the Tombo Furenosuke Shinayaka tip. It doesn't have sign in its name, so does that mean it's a truer brush pen? It has a harder tip compared to the Zebra Fude sign pen. It's one of the softer tips in the Tombo Furenosuke range, and they even advertise that their softer tips are aimed towards brush pen beginners, like me. But I find that it's still a bit difficult for me to use because I have to exert much more effort to push down on the pen to get the strokes I want. I use this pen when I want to write smaller size titles, like my memories or my tracker spread. For captions and subheadings, I also use this Tombo Fude no Suke Shikkari tip. This is the hardest tip among the pen brushes. That's basically what the Japanese Shikkari means. Shikkari means to be steady, so you can count on this tip to stay strong. This is aimed towards more advanced brush pen users. It's kind of meh for me when I use it for hand lettering. I think it shines more when the writing is slanted or in cursive, because the hard tip allows for more control over strokes. I like soft and flowy strokes, which is why I prefer softer tips. I usually use this when I want to write several text blocks, like in my memories or my goal spread. This is my practice pen. This pen is what I use when I want to practice hand lettering. The Pentel Touch Sign Pen. It has a soft tip, it's not as flexible as the Zebra Fude though. It's the perfect middle pen, not too soft, not too hard, and in that way it's great for daily practice. It's a very light pen in terms of weight. The Fude no Sukes are the heaviest of the pens I own, followed by the Zebra and the Pentel. So I find the Fude no Sukes require a bit more effort to control because of that. And now let's get into style pens, or pens that I use to add more flair to my pages. First up is the Zebra Mod Liner Brush Pen. You probably know about the Mod Liner highlighters, but did you know that they also came out with brush versions? They are rarely available for individual purchase, unlike the Mod Liner highlighters, which is why I had to purchase them as sets. I bought two sets, and each set comes with five pens. Like the Mod Liner highlighters, each pen comes with two different tips. One end has a brush tip, and the other end is a super fine tip. Other than that, it's exactly the same in every way, even their casing and pen body. The two sets that I got is the Harmony and the Elegant set, although these are probably not the official English names. The colors of the Harmony set make up a warm palette, and the colors of the Elegant set make up a cool palette. There is another set, and that is the Neon set, and it's very similar to that of basic highlighter colors. I particularly love the Harmony set. The colors look so good together. I use these color brush pens to create art for my monthly cover pages and to color headings. 
Next up are the undisputed highlighter kings of the stationary community, and that is the Zebra Mild Liners. I'll just go through this very quickly because everybody and their mother and their sister knows about this. It comes with two tips, a chisel and a fine tip. One thing to note about the fine tip is that the tip size between the regular mild liners and the brush mild liners are different. The mild liner brush fine tip is actually super fine. As you can see here, I'm demonstrating just how fine it is. And right next to it, you can see just how much thicker the regular mild liner fine tip is. There are more colors available than that of the brush pen lineup, and that's probably because they've been around for much longer. I purposely chose colors that were not already included among the brush pens, with the exception of violet because I just love the color so much. I use these for headings to add color to topical spreads like my wish list, my shopping list, to travel goals, and it helps to distinguish from more familiar spreads which use brush pen colors. This is the Grey Pentel Touch Sign Pen. Earlier I showed you the same pen in black. Recently they came out with a lot more colors. I use this for shadowing. The light grey goes very well with all the mild liner colors. And since it's very lightly pigmented, it adds dimension without being too harsh. An important thing to note is that the Pentel Sign Pens, if used together, will blend. They have ink that is easily passable between the brushes. If you touch two different color brush pens against each other, they will transfer their ink between one another. And this is one way that you can create a blend of two colors. Next up are the gel pens. I use three, and all are from the brand Unisigno. I have two metallics, the silver and the gold, in broad tip. The regular tip is also available, but it takes more strokes to show. I often use these on top of already inked paper, so it's good to have broad strokes to make it easily visible. I use it to accentuate cover page art and headings and titles. It's a very easy way to add flair to a page and spice it up. It especially looks good with black text. The Unisigno White Gel Pen Broad Tip. I use this in a very similar way to that of my metallic pens. I use it to brighten up text. It obviously works very well with black ink. And I've also found that it works especially well with mild liners. It gives them a little punch. And last but not least, but are more like honorable mentions, I use this mechanical pencil. It's actually part of a set. It came with a ball pen. This is a Winnie the Pooh mechanical pencil I purchased from Tokyo Disneyland many, many years ago. It has sentimental value because it's one of the first stationary purchases I made from one of my first Tokyo Disney visits. And then sometimes, because I pencil in my art before lining it in pen, I use this Tombow Mono Eraser. You can get a pack of two for 100 yen. I used to use the Stadler Eraser for a while, but I found it to be too rough on paper. It felt like I had to work with the Stadler. But the Tombow erased much more easily. And then we have this Lion Brand Ruler. What makes this ruler unique is that it has a notch on the end, which lets the ruler grab onto the edge of the paper. Especially useful when you are using it on a book or magazine. To be honest, I've only used it a few times before I decided that I wanted to care less about straight lines, and perfection honestly just takes a lot of energy, and I want my bullet journal experience to be organic and liberating, and that means not having to be picky about perfect lines. And that's everything I use for bullet journaling. I hope you found this video insightful in one way or another, and if you'd like to support me, a thumbs up is always appreciated, and please subscribe and hit that bell. Until then, see you in the next video.